How's it going everyone? Welcome back. And in this tutorial, I want to talk to you a bit about the IO tab. So in the previous video, we covered how to navigate and use the editor tab here. And we talked about viewport navigation and the outliner and all these tools here. So in this video, we're going to be doing the same thing, but for this tab, and it's going to be a quite a lot simpler. Um, there's just not as much going on here. It's a two dimensional view. There's no outliner. And so this will be a pretty quick thing to set up. Um, we're going to kind of breeze through certain things because uh, I really don't want to spend too much time on IO and macro specific things. We're going to really just focus on how to navigate this window. Uh, and so to do that, I'm going to create a very quick setup here that is going to be what we work with. Um, so you can follow along uh, and I'll explain all these things in more detail in later videos. But if you go to the create tab and click on systems and then all, we're going to create a macro. And we can just put this macro anywhere. Let's put this right in the center of our, of our graph. Once we've created our macro, we can enter the macro by clicking this button up here. Uh, and the, by the way, and the way this works in, in the IO tab, you have two kind of categories of objects. You have system objects, which can be uh, present in this top level of your graph. Uh, and you have content nodes uh, that can only be created inside of a macro. So if we go over here, you'll notice that all these things like constants and strobes and uh, ramps. It says some nodes can only be created inside of a macro container. That's because we need to be inside of a macro to create these. And that is why we're creating a macro uh, for this video. So we'll click on the macro and we'll just enter. And you know you're inside of a macro. Uh, there's two, two main signifiers. You have this orange outline that tells you you're inside of a macro. And you also have the blue fractional time bar, right? Which is something you'll only see inside of a macro. So uh, with those two things present, you know you're inside of a macro and you can start creating uh, nodes. So right here we have a uh, sample scene or a sample graph, I should say. And we have a ramp and a texture out node. And so we're going to just add a few more things to this, um, to this graph here just to make it a little bit more visually interesting. So I'm going to left click uh, out here in the graph to deselect ramp one. And I'll go over here to the Create tab, and I will go to, uh, let's see, Utilities, and Composite. And then I'll click Deselect again, and I will create a uh, Texture Generative. And let's just make a Noise Texture, and let's just go ahead and turn off Monochromatic just to make it more interesting. and. Lastly, let's connect these to our inputs. I'm going to explain all of this here in just a moment. I'm just going to set this to uh, multiply and we'll connect the output of composite one to our texture out. So here we have a very simple uh, scene or graph. Uh, and this is basically uh, not doing anything uh, functional at the moment. It's just something for us to mess with so that we can talk about some of the controls. Okay, so uh, to select things in the IO graph, it's, it's quite similar to the editor, but it's a little different. Uh, so if you left click on things without any modifiers, you're gonna get the same left click to select mode. And you'll notice that as you select things, your attribute editor here for the nodes updates. And if you have multiple nodes selected, it's gonna basically take the last selected object and it's gonna show you the attributes for that object. So if you're tweaking two different types of objects uh, and you tweak a ramp, and uh, the type parameter doesn't exist on a noise, it's just not going to update the noise texture for that parameter. So if you're updating something like TX, it'll update both. But if you update something like um, the ramp type, it's not going to give you any errors. It's just not going to update the noise. So, okay. <clears throat> so left click to select. You can also hold shift to select multiple and you can hold control to deselect. Um, you can use marquee select as well. Uh, it's a little bit different than the editor where you actually had to explicitly enter a marquee mode in the IO graph. Marquee is always available. All you have to do is right click and drag. And when you do that, you are basically overriding your selection, right? So this is different than the editor where you're always in add mode. This is actually just overriding by default, but you can hold shift to add and hold control to remove as well. This game is slightly different because it's built to mimic what Touch Designer does. And if you're coming from Touch Designer, this will feel right at home to you. And if you're not, 
familiar with Touch Designer. Um, Touch Designer is the interface and system that GeoPix is built in. You can get to it by hitting Shift Escape, and uh, there's a you know very very complex graph and network editing system there that basically has the same controls. And the idea here is to mimic this and base this off of uh, the Touch Designer workflow because you know a lot of you will have that as experience, and hopefully this makes your process a little a little more intuitive. Okay, so basically that's it for selection. Um, over here under the node option menu, we have some of the things we just talked about. Um, we could delete and we have duplicate as well. So you can duplicate uh, by hitting control D. That's gonna just pretty much copy a node and paste it right next to it. Uh, if you wanna take a certain chunk of nodes and you wanna put it inside a different macro, um, you can do that as well. Uh, so let me go ahead and create another macro. Uh, real quick and then I'll go back into our original macro and we'll just take our noise I'll go up to node copy exit go to macro 3 enter and I'll just um, go to node and paste this so now we have our noise from macro from the other macro in our new macro but um, that's just a quick demonstration of that so I'll go and delete this um, Going back into our macro, uh, let's talk about the node connections here. Uh, this is a fairly straightforward thing for those of you who are familiar with touch, but I'll go ahead and walk through the types and, and the general process anyways. So uh, let me make one more node just to show you the full set of types that we have. Uh, so audio is its own type, so we'll go ahead and do a audio file in. Uh, there's no audio file coming in, obviously, but if there was, you'd see a wave, uh, waveform moving here. Uh, so we've got our outputs. And if you mouse over it, you'll see a preview of the data as well as uh, the actual connector uh, highlights. It turns uh, orange. So you can do this over every type of connector output, and it will show you a preview. Uh, in the case of audio, you're not actually outputting this texture. You're just outputting this information. This is just a preview of that information. Uh, so light blue is your audio. Uh, this kind of purple is your texture operators, and green is your channel data, right? So things like uh, an OSC slider or a MIDI value, this would be things that would fall into the category of channel data. In the case of a ramp, right, this is going to be a 0 to 1 value. In fact, the progression of this bar down here that goes from dark blue to light blue, uh, your OSC or your, your channel value is actually that number, right? So we have 0.74 because that's the, the point that our ramp is at. So you can do really interesting things uh, by driving other parameters with you know parameters from, from your ramp. So, uh, okay, so we have our outputs and your inputs. Inputs are on the left side of a node, outputs are on the right, and it's quite simple to connect things. Uh, so if you don't have anything connected, let's go ahead and disconnect this stuff real fast. Your nodes will change a little bit. You can only connect, you know, similar colors to similar colors. So I can't connect green to blue or purple. It's going to say you can only connect uh, similar. Uh, you cannot connect an input on one object to its own or an output to its own input, right? So it's not going to let you do that uh, because that's an invalid connection. So you can only connect um, the outputs of a node to the inputs of another uh, like this. And uh, you can also, and this is not recommended because this will get you into trouble, but if let's say we have another composite node, um, you can plug this into here and this into here, and this is bad. Don't do this. This is, uh, this is going to get you into an endless cycle, cyclical data, and it's typically it won't crash the software, but this this is definitely incorrect. You should not be seeing things crisscross like this. Um, basically, things should flow left to right, and and that's it. So we're going to go and connect this ramp back to, or I'm sorry, the noise back to this composite. And here we've had multiply selected from earlier, but you can change the mode if you would like. And we'll go ahead and delete our audio file for now because we're not going to mess with that at the moment. And we'll just connect this to here. Uh, disconnect, you can just drag uh, any any input or output onto the graph and it will disconnect it for you. But you can drag in both directions, either or, doesn't matter. Um, 
and you know that you're connected because you'll see the line animating. So, okay, uh, now you'll notice here that we have some text floating around the interface. We have the name of the node. So if you have your you know name parameter ramp one, you're gonna see that below. You have the type, um, oh, I'm sorry, that's above, right? Here in the bottom left is your object type, right? So this is a generator, it's a ramp, this is a noise, and then the bottom right you have the resolution of that top. Um, so resolution's important uh, because as you build up your collection of macros, you're going to consume GPU memory for each of these. This is a, an RGBA texture, 960 by 540, right? So if you're dealing with a very small array of maybe LED pixels and you're only controlling like a 100 by 100, you don't need this kind of resolution. This is the default, uh, but I would definitely recommend uh, increasing this to, I'm sorry, decreasing this to much smaller numbers if you are dealing with smaller textures. So uh, let's try that real quick. Let's do 256 by 256. Um, this is a square texture now. Uh, you'll notice that the composite is still taking our resolution of 960 by 540, and that's because it's taking that resolution from the second input. So uh, this can be remedied by simply adjusting the noise as well. So 256 by 256. And once we've done that, once both inputs are the same resolution, and in most cases, this is something that you should want. Uh, now our, our texture here is also um, 256 and 256. So this keeps things much slimmer and more efficient. Also, this is gonna save you on cook times and CPU and GPU times, well, mostly GPU times, but uh, you're only gonna see that on slower GPUs or systems where you're running very, very complex arrays of textures. So. Um, yeah, make sure to manage your texture size. It's up to you, uh, making sure that's you know what it should be. If you find these labels a bit annoying, you can turn these off. Uh, it's somewhere in here, graph uh, node labels. So this will basically hide those and give you a cleaner uh, experience here in the graph. Uh, but I find this to be helpful in most cases. And as you zoom out, you'll notice that some of these start to fall away because you just you don't need to see that that far away. But um, yeah, so that's that's that. All right. So we pretty much covered most of the things you know that you need to be aware of in this. Um, there's a few other things, and again, we're going to talk about this more in a dedicated um, I/O video for creating content. But uh, you'll notice that you have these two buttons down here: play and stop. And while you're inside of a macro, right, our edge is orange. These play and stop buttons will trigger the current macro to start or stop, all right? Um, if we go up a level, and let's go ahead and create a new macro. We have those buttons here, but only when we have something selected. So what this does is it triggers uh, the macros that we have selected so we can trigger multiple ones. And you'll notice that they're not running in sync because there's nothing driving these. They're driving themselves, and we started them at different times. So if we click stop and start together, uh, they will they will track together. Um, and this will, of course, work fine for testing, but this is not how you would drive these things in production. This is just a quick way to test things. Plus your macros might not even be the same length, right? They are set to a length of two seconds. And in practice, a macro might be half a second, it might be 10 seconds, it might be two minutes if you're playing back a video, all right? So anyways, Play and stop. You can also access these up here from the macro uh, menu. You also have these options, disconnect all outputs and inputs, um, trigger macro, stop macro, and you also have this sequence pix frames button, which uh, we will not get into now. Just know that this opens up an additional floating UI that allows us to do uh, some helpful things here in you know, relation to, to pix frames. So, okay, you can also get to that UI inside of a macro by going to macro sequence pix frames. All right, and that just about sums it up for the IO graph. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, stick around. We'll have one next on the perform tab, and then we will be getting close to wrapping up the introduction series. Thanks a lot, and appreciate you watching.